Hello students, today we are going to understand what are the various elements and the principles that govern the creation of a good design. I would like you to open your books to the chapter of elements of design in order to go through all the images that we have given in the book to relate to what I am talking right now. Okay, I know that a lot of you would have heard at some point all or some of these words that we will be discussing today. But here we will try to understand how they relate to you with reference to your designing. Now as you can see in this first slide here, there are some seven basic elements of design. They are line, shape, form, space, color, texture and value. Now let us see each of this element in detail and what it means to us in designing. Line is the first element of design that we will be discussing today. What is a line? We use our lines pretty regularly, right? On the first day, we discussed there are certain types of lines like vertical lines, horizontal lines, diagonal and curved lines. The wavy and spiral lines and the other types of lines that we drew that day are just the derived lines from diagonals and curves. Here in this slide, you can see what each type of line represents. I need you to remember this because there might be 2D composition questions wherein you will have to show show some representation in the form of using lines. The next element of design is shape. When we join lines together to create a bound figure, it is called a shape. Shapes are what we use when doing a 2D composition. As mentioned here, there are two types of shapes, geometric shapes and organic shapes. Geometric shapes can be drawn using a ruler, compass or digital instruments. These shapes are very precise. For example, when we draw a square, a triangle or a circle. Whereas the organic shapes are what we are, can freely find in nature on, or can be drawn using our free hand. These shapes often are very natural and smooth in nature. These we can for making a 2D composition, we can we may be asked to use either type of the shapes. Form is the three-dimensional aspect of any object. It is defined by the height, length and breadth of that object. We use this in our 3D compositions. There are again two types of forms, geometric and natural forms. Geometric are again our cubes, cuboids, pyramids that we have drawn before. And the natural forms are mountains, rocks, maybe anthills and things like we openly find in the nature. Top of space, it could be three-dimensional or two-dimensional in nature. Three-dimensional space is the room that we occupy or the spaces that are outside. Whereas two-dimensional space is our paper. The two-dimensional space, when we consider it, it is in consideration when we are doing our 2D compositions or 3D compositions and memory drawings. Whereas the space that we are sitting in is the three-dimensional space we might consider when designing an interior, when designing a building, etc. So three dimensional space are of again three types, open clut or uncluttered space, wherein we have extreme amount of free space and one can move from one end to another. The second type is the cramped or busy space. These busy spaces can be defined by our uh, food courts in the mall or very crowded stations, etc. And the third type is unused spaces. You have sometimes no I. I hope you have sometimes noticed there are certain buildings, certain shops that are absolutely unused. These spaces come under unused spaces. In the two dimensional aspect of space, there are again two types of spaces, positive space and negative space. When you create an object like a square or a rectangle or a triangle, the space inside that square or triangle is the positive space. The space that is forming that triangle is the positive space, whereas the space outside beyond that triangle is the negative space. As you can see in the image that is besides, there are four squares. All the four squares make up the positive space and the plus part in between that is in white that makes up the negative space. Color is a very important element of design as it gives more meaning to a composition or helps us in highlighting the important features of your composition. The color wheel as it is shown here mentions all your basic primary, secondary and tertiary colors. We have already discussed these colors in the class and the various color schemes that we get through these color schemes.
Here we have a list of colors and the various meanings each of the color depicts. I need you all to go through all this list and note it down for your reference because you might be needing what a particular color means to put it in your composition to make your compositions more meaningful. I will also be providing you with this list on our study material section. on the next important element of design is texture what is texture texture refers to the surface quality of any object artwork or a composition there are basically two types of textures smooth texture and rough texture a smooth texture reflects more light and hence its colors feel more intense whereas a rough texture absorbs more light and hence it appears darker now there are various ways in which we can create texture on any surfaces. For example, when the artist tries dry brushing techniques, it creates a rough texture. When you properly paint an object or paint your composition, it creates a very smooth texture. Various textures, using various textures in your composition makes, your, uh, makes them more dynamic and more involving. The last one in the list of elements of design is value. It is also referred to as tone. Value is a relative lightness and darkness of the object. When we discuss value, it is either a shade of a color or a tint of a color. Now what is a shade? It is a degree of darkness of a color. And what is a tint? It is the pale or the faint variation of color. If you all remember, we had discussed this on the first day that a shade of a color is what you get when you add black color to it. And the tint of a color is what you get when you add white color to it. I hope you all remember this. Moving on. The second topic that we are covering today is principles of design. Now, principles of design are not just important from your theory or aptitude point of view. But they are also important for you to understand how to create a very good composition, how to create a very good design. Let's go through what they are. Here we have listed six principles of design. What are they? Balance, rhythm, emphasis, proportion and scale, harmony and repetition. Let's see them one by one. The first and a very important principle of design is balance. Now what is balance? Balance is something that gives a person, a viewer, a psychological sense of equilibrium. What does that mean? Balance means when everything feels very much equal, very much normal, very much practicable. Now there are three types of balance. Symmetrical balance, asymmetrical balance and radial balance. Symmetrical ba balance is essentially when you can divide your picture, your composition into a half and both the sides are extremely identical. Asymmetrical balance is when you do not have extremely identical sides, two sides of an object or a composition and yet your whole composition looks very much balanced. Whereas radial balance is something that could be defined as organized around one central point or one central element. Now, how to use these techniques into your 2D composition? You could either divide your objects into two parts and then create a composition that is extremely symmetrical. You could use a symmetrical balance. Maybe we create something that has bigger objects on one side and it is balanced by some smaller objects, but more number of smaller objects on the other side. Or you can create a focal point, a central point and then radiate all your objects from the center. You have to always relate what we are learning in our theory lectures to your 2D compositions or 3D compositions in order to make better compositions. Second principle of design is rhythm. Now what is rhythm? It is when we repeat one or more elements to create a feeling of organized movement. Now, if you remember, I have been telling you in class to create a flow in your compositions, to create some dynamism. Now, this rhythm is how you create some flow and dynamism in your comp compositions. Now, there are four types of rhythm, regular, graduated, random, and gradated. Regular rhythm is when you repeat your objects one after the another in a similar fashion for a limited time. Gradated rhythm, is when 
your rhythm is increasing and decreasing based on your requirement random rhythm are the beats of elements when the beats of your elements are random when there is no defined scale or no defined pattern to your rhythm and gradated rhythm is when you repeat your element but you just change some aspect of it so maybe you are repeating your squares but you like rotate it 360 degrees one by one one by one or maybe you are repeating your squares but you are increasing the size of this to get a better idea of what this rhythms are and what we are discussing i would like you to keep a check from our notes as to what we are discussing principle of design is emphasis if you remember i have been telling you to create a focal point in your composition now how to create this focal point we can either create a focal point using a different shape for example we are using all the triangles we can use a pentagon or a circle to create a focal point we can even create a focal point by differentiating the size of those objects like for example if there is a composition made of entirely out of triangles you could put a very huge triangle in the center or at one point and then everything is smaller than that thus it will create an emphasis there are other ways of creating emphasis that is by using colors or various values of colors proportion and scale is another very important principle of design it refers to the relative size and scale of various elements in the design proportion is basically the feeling of unity that is created when all the parts relate to with each other for example when we are drawing a human figure i think some 2 3 days ago i gave you the assignment to draw a human figure in that we were supposed to draw human figure that would be proportionate that is take the size of the head that is proportionate to the rest of the body why is proportion and scale important proportion and scale help you to achieve the balance in your compositions now yet another principle of design is harmony what is harmony harmony in visual design means all parts of the visual image relate and complement each other harmony is basically a feeling of unity between the entire work of art or your composition that creates a sense of completeness now you can create this sense of completeness by using patterns what do i mean by patterns you were probably given some 6 7 objects 6 7 shapes to create a todi composition we can try creating a pattern if they are if we are allowed to use these shapes multiple times we can try creating a pattern and then repeating that pattern to create a sense of harmony to create a sense that it is one complete picture okay the last principle of design that we'll be discussing today is repetition repetition works with pattern to make the work of art make seem more active the repetition of elements of design creates a unity within the work of art now this repetition can be achieved by a lot of methods you can either repeat one singular element you can repeat a part of your composition or you might repeat the entire composition once or twice or thrice to make it into a whole united design or a composition so this is it about the elements and principles of design i hope you have understood what i was talking about what we discussed here today in case you all have any doubts you can revert to me in the chat section or our whatsapp group i'll be always there to solve your doubts thank you